Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. And um, last night you did your goals. Um, and um, like, like sex, it all comes at the end. I'm going to tell you, uh, somebody asked me about Russia. I'm going to tell you uh, about, for those of you that want to go to Russia, I'm not going to tell you on, on YouTube. Um, but it's not easy. We'll just leave it at that. Now, do you think that that, you've seen this slide before, but do you think it's, it's an accident since Mr. Carnegie is my virtual hero, mentor, that my estate looks similar to his? You think it's an accident? You think it's coincidental? You think it's fucking serendipity? That 17 months later, I moved in this place after I set the goal. How is this possible? Just like I'm crazy for 70 years. Thank you very much. I already mentioned John Elway when he was six years old, had a dream of visualization and affirmation, I'm going to win a Super Bowl in the overtime. But he didn't say that he, uh, he was going to win it in his first Super Bowl in overtime. He didn't say that he was going to win it in his second Super Bowl. He won his uh, Super Bowl in his third attempt. We've got a kid up here, Hall of Famer, Mexican kid. Uh, while I was in high school, uh, he was, uh, the high school team, baseball team he was on was a really good team. He was ranked in the top 10 or something in the United States. And his coach said, we're going to get to the state finals. They went to the state finals and won, lost two to one. He didn't say he was going to win in the state finals. The next year, coach, God love him, uh, changed it around, the affirmations, and they went four to two. I've got guys up there that are Olympians. Their goal all their life was to go to the Olympics, not to win a medal. Ergo, they didn't win any fucking medal. I can go on and on and on. I saw myself dressed like that, prancing around, uh, way before I moved into this place. I told somebody, uh, more than one person, when I was on one-on-one -on -one time yesterday, half late afternoon, early evening, that... Um, for 10 years, almost to the day I spent in that office behind that desk, uh, pounding myself 18, 20 hours, 20, you know, a week to the exclusion of any, everything else. The only time I ever left was when I had meetings. Um, but having this estate, I had the luxury of almost getting, being able to get anybody here for a meeting. Not dissimilar to my experience in the penthouse or, uh, Rockefeller Plaza, when my first chairman was uh, Bob Anderson, former Secretary of Treasury. The, 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 the success leaves clues. But if you don't do this yet, you don't get this or whatever this equivalent thereof for you is. It's not an accident. This shit really works. If I'd had any athletic ability whatsoever, I would have been an Olympian for sure, and I would have got a medal. I'm not saying gold medal, because I might have dropped the baton as I crossed the, the, the finish line or something. Which I've dropped the baton or the equivalent thereof in my limited <laughs> um, uh, athletic career. We're not going to talk about the goals and affirmations, etc., on YouTube, because I don't want permanent record of your embarrassing uh, comments. Uh, and more importantly, you probably don't want a permanent record of your embarrassing comments. But how virtually everybody in the room, save two or three maybe, your goals are not, uh, not uh, elaborate enough. Not, now, they're not bold enough. They're not unrealistic. They're not bodacious. They're not over the top. They're not unconventional. 
and you probably can accomplish them in a, a lifetime as opposed to you should not be able to accomplish them in a lifetime. There's one person in here that has a goal that is a you know, 100 or 200 year goal, so he's not gonna accomplish it in a lifetime. When I set this as a goal, in March 1983, it was pretty over the top. I want to live in a castle on an island. I, 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 I dreamt or I visualized like a James Bond island, you know, out in the uh, west of uh, Scotland. And as Sally reminds me from time to time, I am on an island, but not the kind of island I thought. I thought I'd have a moat. I saw the governesses and nannies, you know, uh, training my kids. I saw two tennis courts. Now, we've ripped our tennis court down that I had built, but I saw two tennis courts. I saw a golf course. And here we are. And I wish that I hadn't made that goal because this thing has stuck more money than, you know, three 52-inch titted hookers that just sucked money from me like blood from my veins for the last 38 years. But here I am. Um, of course, now, without the castle and the sem I mean, so I'm more or less stuck here until I stop giving seminars. When I stop giving seminars, I'll be out of here like a fucking thief in the night. Boom. Sotheby's, here's, get rid of it. Furniture, I'll keep a couple of the paintings. That, I'm an adios motherfucker. And I will feel like the weight, of, like Atlas Shrugged, you know, pushing the fucking Atlas up the, I'll feel like the weight of the world's off my shoulders. Three workmen here today. I don't even ask anymore because it hurts me. That's in addition to our three permanent workmen we've got. And I was yelling, new boiler, new boiler. We need a 120,000 pound new boiler. Please give me a new boiler. We just put new boilers in. New roof, new roof, please. I need a 400,000 pound roof. You have no idea, other than the people that are in construction, how much it is to do the tarmac driveway three quarters of a mile. You'd think the tarmac would last. Naively, 20 years? They don't make that shit anymore the last 20 years. Now it disintegrates. <laughs> so when we talk about the goals, you know, but it happens. And the kids, many of the kids up there, and many of the kids that we, I can't show you their face, um, the shit has happened already in just a short period of time. Now, you know, guys like Andreas and Thomas and uh, uh, even the Goomba brothers uh, wish that they had had more bodacious over the top goals because they've already accomplished the things that they set two or three years ago. But it only works when you believe, not in the system, but you believe in yourself. We all know the system works. The only question is whether you can make it work for you. That's the only question. Um, comments about uh, my virtual idol, Mr. Carnegie, from um, last night's homework. Yes, sir. As you had said earlier, to further echo your sentiments, he was ruthless cocksucker. And he rolled over his mentor, who arguably gave him his first start in life. I as love that. He was nothing. I love that. That's what's going to happen to you. You're going to try to befriend your chairman, and he's going to fuck you in the mouth. <laughs> and you're going to call Kim. I can't wait. <laughs> Kim, look in the book. Look in the big book. Mr. Penny's busy. Sorry. Occasionally, whoops, occasionally I go back and pull out your homework. 
but I, I remember, but just, you know, just how, how much of a retard was he or she or it? What else about Mr. Carnegie? Yes, sir. He became a philanthropist after he plundered the world. Out of guilt. Almost all the guys that are giving money, it's out of guilt. Just in case there is a big man or big woman or big head up there, there's probably artificial intelligence up there. That's what we're going to find out. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, let's just cover our bases. And honestly, uh, in candor, when I started being philanthropic about 20 years ago, the um, I said I had a friend named uh, Father John. He was a Carmelite priest I've known since high school, junior high school. And um, the um, I go to confession, and that's a Catholic deal. They call it reconciliation now. I go to confession, and most people get five uh, Our Fathers, ten Hail Marys. Maybe a rosary. I used to get 25 rosaries, a hundred of each, 300 active contritions. This is one penance. And, and John, he was an Irish guy from Boston. Uh, his, his surname was Fogarty, God rest his soul. Um, and he say, uh, he knew I wasn't going to do it. So he say, why don't you come over to the rectory for dinner? That's where the priests live. And um, he says, come a little early. We'll have drinks. And we sit there in his uh, drawing room, and we drink, and I go through my prayers with him. Or he'd say, I got tickets to the Lakers game. He used to get priests and shit, get free tickets and shit like that. And we'd be saying my penance all the way to the Lakers game. During the breaks, and people didn't want to sit around us because this is a bit, and he'd wear his uh, Carmelite robes, his big brown robes, with a big belt here. And I know what that belt feels like because that's what he uses to pin people. And he was about six foot five and he weighed about 320 pounds. He, he, was not, he was not slim. He was built like a couple of you tubs of shit that are in here. And um, he ate about, we never counted his calories, but he must have ate 15, 20,000 calories a day. And he probably drank 10,000 calories a day. I gave him a case of beef eater gin for Christmas, one Christmas. And then I took the boys over for dinner, um, the, uh, not New Year's Eve, but the day before New Year's Eve. And I asked his, uh, his housekeeper, um, you know, uh, give me a beef eater martini. And he had a beef eater martini. And then she comes to me and whispers in my ear, we don't have any more gin. I say, today's the 30th or 29th of December. I gave him a case of fucking beef eater on the 22nd of December, and it's gone. And I went in there and I said, John, and he blamed it on the other priest that lived there, this little guy about this size who didn't drink. He always blamed it on us, you know. And uh, the, uh, so that's the only way I say my penance. Uh, he was uh, the uh, MC, Master of Ceremony, at my 50th birthday, which is online on film. But, these, these things happen. These things happen. What else about Mr. Carnegie? Yes, sir. He was constantly restructuring the company, uh, always viewing the vision of how to cut costs, cut labor, increase profits. And he used his ability as a teleoperator, whatever that is, when he was, to steal ideas and steal shit. He, he was the first hacker. I mean, he, 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 was the, he was the grandfather of all hackers, you know. Um, and he's never been given anything that even remotely looks or sounds or feels like an award from the UK government, kings or queens. Not even an honorable mention. Because he was, you know, little shit was a beast. What else about Mr. Carnegie? Yes, sir. Paid someone to take his uh, place in the oh, yeah, yeah. in the war, and he ended up dying. Yep. So he, really he, 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 uh, he um, paid the guy seven hundred bucks, which was a lot of money then, a lot of money, uh, and the guy died in the Civil War. Well, a lot of the big icons got deferments during the Vietnam War, or they ran to Canada, 
the anti-war uh, movement wasn't because they were against the war and they went, you know, they, well, why do we want to hurt the North Vietnamese? Because they were fucking cowards and they were afraid of getting killed. That's why they ran to Canada. What else about Mr. Carnegie? Yes, sir. There was only one day of four labors. Fourth of July. That's it. You're working the rest of the year. That's it. Yeah. He was a mama's boy. Like a few of you in this room. Uh, we used to have a section in the seminar. Is it better or how is it different? And, it, and or is it better to be a mama's boy or a daddy's boy? I'm not asking that. That's a rhetorical question. I'm not, but I mean, we had a lot of debate back in the day. Fuck. And you'd be surprised over the years <clears throat> who sided mama's boy <clears throat> and who sided daddy's boy. I mean, and they were vehement about it. The, uh, what else about Mr. Carnegie? Yes, sir. Um, a lot of the business relationships don't last. Thomas Scott, Frick, they all went to shit. Not dissimilar. Your boards, remember, are in transition. I was an anomaly. The same guys for 10 years. One died. But I had a lot of experience before I became the CEO of a public company. Um, and I know I, you, you think of either on a conscious level or a subconscious level about IPOs because almost from the very beginning, I went public. And so, but, and so you think that that's the way to go. The, um, and it is, but I mean, you can't, it's, it's, and that's why you think about a shell and these other things. But um, I already explained to you yesterday the, um, the drawbacks of going public. What else about Mr. Carnegie? In the back, Doc. He realized he could have asked for $100 million more and he would have gotten it. See, don't ask, you don't get. Correct, yeah, exactly. And that stuck in his craw. When I was uh, talking to the administrator of Skibo, um, when Sally took me for my 75th birthday and we spent a week at Skibo Castle, um, and the... Uh, and I know the hedge fund guy that owns Skibo Castle. Uh, and uh, they, they brought it to me to, to buy uh, back in the um, early 80s, middle 80s. And I, and I saw pictures of it. And I, I didn't even go look at it at that time. Because when I heard that it had uh, 105 rooms, and, and I'm just, and at that time I was just shoving money uh, hand over fist to fix shit here. And that, uh, the golf course was in disrepair, and actually the golf course they have now is a brand new golf course built about 15 years ago. And uh, I thought, fuck, no, that's, that's a bridge too far. It's a bridge too far. Yeah, you don't ask, you don't get. Uh, J.P. Morgan would have given them 100 or maybe even more million. The, uh, but 450 million, I believe, and I don't believe, I know, was the biggest transaction in recorded history. Now, the other thing is, <clears throat> And this is a little, you know, uh, for, for uh, people that have come through the seminar over the years. I made $450 million. Carnegie sold for $450 million. I don't know. That I didn't plan. The, the gods, are, I, don't, I don't know exactly why, but. So there's a, you know, there's a lot of uh, coincidences. The cap it's not a coincidence. <clears throat> But there's a lot of coincidence vis-a-vis -vis what Mr. Carnegie did. But I didn't have people killed yet, like he did. And he ran off to Scotland and the UK while his henchmen were doing all this bad shit. The first um, private eye company, Pinkerton's, out of Glasgow was formed. And they were just like army. They were an army. What else? Anything else about uh, Mr. Carnegie? Uh, his determination came from his mom. I mean, he passed on as, as a DNA, and uh, and his mantra was, uh, "Look after the pennies and pounds. Take care of themselves." And for, well, maybe if his mother hadn't told him that, he would have asked for another hundred million. Um, penny wise and pound foolish. 
is how I look at it. Uh, and, and my mother, I mean, I won't say she had her first nickel, but I mean, she had her first nickel. Uh, she was extremely frugal. Um, anything else about Mr. Carnegie? <clears throat> he is, I don't know about the first, and in the era that he was, there were, you know, there were half a dozen or eight or ten of these uh, guys like Astor, et cetera, uh, that were, um, came from frugal backgrounds, and some of them didn't come. Rockefeller, the first Rockefeller, came from a frugal background. The, the subsequent Rockefellers certainly didn't. And of course, I was privileged to be in that penthouse. And thinking back in hindsight, I, I didn't use that fucking penthouse in Rockefeller Center enough. I should have slept there. I did sleep in the office a couple of times, but I mean, I should have just been there 24-7, 365. Oh. But the guys and the gals that you're, for the most part, rubbing elbows with, other than calling you on New Year's Eve to pay them out because they're drunk driving, that's not going to happen for you. And you'll see when you earmark I keep using Dr. Ben Carson, forgive me, Doc, but uh, people like that that you don't have to explain about. <clears throat> Most of them are, are, are not generous with their time. Most of them are generous with their response. Thank you very much for contacting me, uh, but I'm, you know, conflicted. Good luck for you, to you, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, some are just assholes, you know. Uh, the, their administrative assistant or the a personal assistant that I'm telling you to get will be, uh, you know, after the third, fourth, or fifth call, they will be vicious to you on the phone to make sure you don't call back. But then you still call back. Okay? Because every once in a while, these guys pick up their own phone. Um, and I've con I already told you, uh, here at the seminar, some of the guys, back in the day, they, con they, got, they got through to Bill Gates. Bill Gates' email address used to be bgates at microsoft.com. Now, what the fuck? Now, I don't know if that's still the case. But it used to be. Now you'd think that wouldn't be. But um, it used to be. Okay, anything else about uh, Mr. Carnegie? Okay, YouTube. Adios. <laughs>